Hey there guys, this is Reckles with Want to Buy Gold, and I got a question on Twitter asking about what server size is best, what markets are best, and I'm super excited because I haven't gotten to talk about econ and mathy stuff in a while. Also, I just changed servers and was able to double my money in doing so. So, let's answer his question and a whole bunch more. Let's do this, guys. Okay. So, I like to compare large and small servers to selling Toyotas versus selling Lexus. Uh, it, if you don't know, Toyotas and Lexuses are pretty much the same car, but Lexuses have a different badge and wood grain. That's it. Toyota Motor Corporation made $250 billion in net revenue in 2016, and people estimate that up to half of that is from their Lexus division, even though they sold 16 million Toyotas and only 600,000 Lexus. So, if you're looking for a new server to play World of Warcraft on, do you want to sell 16 million things and have them fly off the shelf, but have almost no profit on each one? Or do you want to make bank on each item, but only have a few things that sell each day? A similar component to this is called purchasing power parity, and this is one of the things people get upset with gold guide makers for. Purchasing power parity says that a basket of goods has the same value in two different economies. The, the dollar may be higher than the yen, but if you combine rent and transportation and a month's worth of groceries for each, each group, uh, it's gonna be the same in both countries. So, while we guide makers often attach a gold value, uh, to, to guides and thumbnails to make things simple, the real resource that you need to worry about is time. If on my server, I can make 50k an hour farming Dreamleaf, but on your server you try it and only make 20k, it can feel like you were lied to. But if I farm for two hours, I would be able to buy that 100,000 gold 885 belt upgrade I've had my eye on, and that same belt on your server only costs 40k you get the same value in the end from two hours of work. But things get tricky when you start to look at specifics. In WoW, like any market, when you have more competition, you generally have lower prices. You can see this in a nice, pretty trend line for Fell Slate. It's so, it's so nice. Storm Rage has 750,000 people and Fell Slate sells 30,000 ores a day for significantly less than on the Kirin Tor server, which only has 250,000 people and only posts 15,000 ore a day. Now, prices are higher on Silverhand, but that makes sense. You only have 4,000 ore posted a day, so yeah, if no one is mining, prices are gonna be higher. You can see a similar trend in Obliterum, and this is a good example of server type. On Silverhand, Obliterum sells for three to 4,000 gold, but on Whisperwind, which is about the same size, it only sells for half of that. Look deeper, and you see that Silverhand has 66 guilds that have cleared any of Heroic Nighthold. It, you know, at least killed Scorperon. Whisperwind has twice as many guilds that have downed Heroic Gul'dan. The raiders on Whisperwind don't need to spend 50k upgrading an Obliterum piece of gear to 865 because they already have 895 from Gul'dan. Let's throw a monkey wrench into things and look at Transmog. Bolt of Netherweave is used to make bags and transmog and various other things. This point is Moonguard, so you might say that Netherweave sells for more on RP servers. But this low price here is Earthen Ring, another RP server, and this other high price is Kargath, just a normal realm. It's an old world map, there's not a lot of competition here. So while you have the same basic downward trend, some people just have their normal price in TSM set higher, and that sets the market price. My favorite thing to look at though is actual transmog, and this is the graph for Glorious Breastplate. It's really interesting to see how closely prices correlate to server size when it comes to transmog. And honestly, a lot of the people who were in this market when uh, factions and servers got merged got to see and, and feel this in action. Uh, here's the thing though. I'm leaving a point out of this graph. I'm being a little sneaky. Glorious Gear is selling for three times what it should on Earthen Ring. Yeah, it's an RP server, but so is Moonguard, and, and that's right on the trend line. So what's happening here? Well, if you only have three or four people 
actively selling high-end transmog, they get to know each other, they get to talking, and sometimes they collude with each other to set prices as high as they want, and no one can do anything about it. You can do this manually, or you can automate it with whitelisting in TradeSkillMaster. So, moral of the story. Things are complicated, and generally, no one except nerdy WoW YouTubers have the time to care about all this stuff. So, here's my list of things to consider when looking at a server. First, ping is important. If you live in Australia and are into high-end PvP, don't play on a US server. You're gonna have half a second less to react to any interruptible abilities. Second, culture is important. If you prefer to think, type, and talk in Spanish, then play on a Latin server and vice versa. If you're a raging racist, I, that's fine, I guess, but you know, don't play on a Latin server. Even though it, you might make more gold or get sweet gear, you're, you're gonna have a bad time. Third, if you have ADHD or you don't, you 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 need that immediate gratification from the auction house. Uh, stay away from low pop servers, even though you'll make the same value in the end. Uh, you're not going to have fun posting things on the auction house. And alternatively, if your favorite gold making avenues are uh, farming raw materials and transmog, then stay away from super high pop servers because you're just not gonna get much profit from those. And on like selling fell slate for 20 gold can feel demoralizing. If you don't really know what you like, go for somewhere in the middle. Generally, I've found that lowish mid pop servers have a lot of profit potential and uh, still enough buyers in the market to keep you happy. Most importantly, though, go where your friends are. I just joined a new guild and transferred to Boulder Fist because even though they aren't top end mythic raiders and the market there honestly isn't super amazing, we just have a good time getting into comms, sharing dick jokes and bad puns. And in the end, that's what gaming is all about. So I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and hit the like button if you did. I hope you have a great day and happy gold making. So, uh, why do Torin have hooves instead of feet? Because they lack toes. <laughs>